Okay, everyone. Well, let's get started. It's uh, the top of the hour plus a little bit, so we've given people a chance to sign on, and, and we have some folks on. So thank you very much for signing on to our Starting Line 101 the Trinona, uh, for the Trinona Triathlon presented by Fastenal, and race day preparation is our primary focus today. And we're going to step right through this deck um, pretty expeditiously so we can have you get on with the rest of your evening. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to provide you with some fantastic information so that you're really ready and uh, ready to go and have a great race day experience. So let's just get going. What are our objectives today? And the race is in nine weeks. That's coming right around the corner, actually. So what are we going to do? We're going to provide information to make your race day a great experience, of course. Answer any questions you have. This is the opportunity to really ask some great questions because uh, you, you have a top area coach on the call as well as the event director on the call which is fantastic and uh, provide some up-to-date information regarding upcoming course clinics and training so as far as your presenters go my name is Troy Jacobson and I'm the head endurance sport coach for lifetime and also one of the master coaches for Ironman University and formerly the official coach of Ironman also with me today is coach Lance Leo he's our regional um, endurance coordinator for the Twin Cities as well as for Chicago and Texas regions. Um, not to mention he's a great athlete himself and runs one of the top tri-team programs in the nation. And then last but not least is Kelly Donahue who is our event manager and just does a fantastic job with all the races that she produces in the Twin Cities region. So it's, we're, we're really privileged to have uh, both Kelly and Lance on the call tonight, and you're going to have a chance to ask them a ton of questions. In addition, they're going to be going over some of the materials. So let's get started with that. Let's first go into our schedule of events. And uh, Kelly, I'm going to throw this over to you. So are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. So thanks everyone for hopping on, and I hope that we're able to get you race ready. Um, this will be my fourth year with the Trinona event. I work closely with the founder of the event, Dave Schutz. I always like to give him a nice shout out. Um, so kind of getting right into it, you know, what, what do you guys need to expect for race weekend? Um, a lot of people, you know, travel down to this event because Winona is such a beautiful, beautiful area. Um, so make sure you leave enough time, you plan out your travel. Um, to get there on Saturday. So Saturday we set up the big um, expo and packet pickup at Lake Winona. Um, it's in the heart of Winona, beautiful with the bluffs looking over you. Um, you'll have your packet pickup from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. So during that time, we also offer our athlete meetings. So during these meetings, we'll go over um, any kind of road conditions, weather, plan, if anything, um, kind of comes up that race weekend that we want to warn you athletes about, we'll talk about it during those athlete meetings. Or if you have any last minute questions you want answered, um, these meetings are awesome to attend. We go over all the details that you need to know about the races. Um, we also offer this uh, optional bike check-in. So this is great if you, you know, especially if you're traveling and you want to come straight to pack a pickup, drop your bike off in transition um, after you pick up all your race materials and leave it there overnight so you don't have to deal with it on race morning. Um, we offer that as a convenience to all of your, all of the athletes. We do have security overnight, so you don't need to worry about anything um, getting taken out. Um, we do then that Saturday night, we also have our super sprint event. So um, if you're at Packet Pickup and you want to stick around and watch our super sprint, that's an awesome event. We get a lot of first-time triathletes there, a lot of 
athletes who've kind of graduated from the kids try, um, ready to step it up to their first open water event. Um, and that race starts at 6 p.m. So they, their packet pickup um, is also, you know, that afternoon. So what do you guys need to bring? What is this thing I keep talking about? Um, you want to be sure to bring your photo ID, um, your license. If you're a USA Triathlon member, you want to be sure to bring your membership card as well so we can, we can track that. And then just a note, if you're on a relay team, all relay team members do have to pick up their packet. Um, so if, if you are on a relay, each person needs to come to packet pickup to get their race materials. So in your packet, you can go to the next slide there. In your packet, you're going to receive a whole bunch of stuff, and we'll have a lot of volunteers there to help you figure out what's what. But in your packet, you're going to get an athlete wristband. So this is what will get you in and out of our transition area. So this is what tells our volunteers that you're an athlete and you're allowed to go in this secured area where all of our bikes are. So you want to wear that the entire day from start to finish. Um, even after you finish the race so that you can get back in at the end of the day to get your bike back out of transition to take it home with you. You're also going to get a timing chip. So this is kind of looks like a little ankle bracelet that you want to make sure that you wear on race day. This is, you know, the one thing do not forget because this is what times you for the entire event and shows your results. Um, one note to keep in mind about this, it is just a Velcro strap that goes around your ankle. Sometimes, you know, we understand it happens. It falls off during the race, during the swim. Um, if that happens, we just want to make sure that all the athletes know to tell a race staff or to tell a volunteer, just, you know, shout it out. I'm bib 311 and I lost my chip just so that we can track that. So we don't think that you are lost in the water someplace. So if you do lose this timing chip during the race, just tell a volunteer. Um, you'll have your clear pla uh, plastic transition bag. So this um, this is what you're going to put anything you need on race day um, in. So um, due to city regulations, after everything with Boston, we have to use plastic transition bags. So you'll just put anything you need in there. And you don't have to put your whole wetsuit and your helmet in there. You can set those out and carry those into transition. But anything like um, your goo, your water bottle, maybe a dry t-shirt for after the swim, you can put all of that stuff in the clear transition bag. Then you'll obviously get the participant race t-shirt that you can wear so proudly to work on Monday. Um, you'll also get your stickers for um, your bike sticker and your helmet sticker. So these are kind of what match your athlete wristband so that we know you know, that you have your bike and you have your helmet when you're leaving at the end of the day. It also helps us tag your race photos um, during the race. So um, if you want to, you know, post on Facebook your bike pictures after the event, make sure you've got that helmet sticker clearly on, on your helmet. You're also going to get your race bib. So this bib, it's optional to wear during the bike, um, and then it's just mandatory for the run portion. So again, you want that on the front of you, not, not on the back, not on the side. Make sure it's clear so we can see it when you're crossing the finish line. Um, again, it helps us take your race photos. It helps us with backup timing in case you do lose your chip or something goes wrong. That's what we use, that race bib. Then you'll also get a fun participant goodie bag where our sponsors like Fastenal um, put fun treats and everything. Um, you'll also get your swim cap. Um, again, this don't don't forget it on race day. And we do our swim caps by wave. So you're going to have a swim cap color coordinated with what wave you're in. So all men 45 to 50 will be one swim cap color. And we'll have a big poster board listing all of the swim cap colors on it. Um, so you can kind of see, you know, who's who. And, and that way on race day, it's very easy for you to organize yourself oh, there's a bunch of people with my same swim cap. I should go stand by them. Um, and then safety pins for your race bib. And then one note, you will get body marked on race morning. Um, so that's something that if you're familiar with racing and you know um, what marks go on, you can do that at home. But otherwise, um, show up on race day and we will be putting your age and your bib number on your arms. So race morning, kind of what to expect on race morning, um, kind of 
backing up. One other thing that you should probably do Saturday when you get there, if this is one of your first times either doing Trinona or kind of one of your first um, triathlons, I'd highly recommend going into the transition area, finding your, your bike rack and kind of getting orientated with, you know, where's the run in, where's the run, uh, where's the bike out, where, where's the swim start, just so that you know all that going into race day. It's going to ease your stress make you feel more comfortable and confident going into the race. If you know where your bike rack is and where the starting line is, where the finish line is, um, Trinona is an awesome event because the whole race site is very close together. So you're able to do whole walk through pretty easily. And if you want, if you want a staff member to kind of walk you around, just go ahead and ask a volunteer, ask a staff when you get there, you know, Hey, can you show me where my transition area is or can you give me the walkthrough? I'm I'm a little lost here, and we're more than happy to help you through that. Um, so on race morning, transition will open bright and early. Um, the internet, both transition areas open up at 5 a.m. Um, you can get there anywhere between 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. It looks like for international. We do have a split transition area for this race because the sprint um event starts so much later than the international we like to give you the option to getting there a little bit late get a little bit more sleep on race morning um, just be sure you get there in enough time to set up your transition area if you need to get body marked go to the bathroom um, you know do all that pre-race pre things that you need to do um, again kind of you can see the race start times there and then after the event, of course, we have the post-race meal provided by High V down there um, with the expo and the awards and prize ceremony, which we have the traditional head wheel set giveaway at the awards ceremony, the last thing we give away. So you'll want to stick around for the chance to win a set of awesome wheels. Um, one thing to kind of keep in mind that we also go over in the athlete meetings, just some common USAT rules. We are a USA triathlon sanctioned event so we do have officials out there and we abide by all of the USA rules um, the common ones that that people maybe get a small um, uh, time penalty for is drafting just make sure that you're at least three bike lengths away from someone um, at all times so we don't allow drafting on this race I know a lot of people want to going up that hill um, but we don't allow that. And if you're passing someone, you pass within 15 seconds. Um, position, blocking, and overtaken are kind of some of the other ones. We have all of these listed out on our website. It's not something to be super nervous about, but be respectful of other racers out there. Um, Trinona is also a partially open bike course and the run course is on the path, but the bike course especially is a heads up type of race. You will have cars on one side of the road. We get to take up half of the road, but just be aware that this is a heads up race. You want to watch where you're going, watch where other athletes are. Um, there is one kind of intersection that we'll talk about when we go over the course um, that's a little bit trickier where you've got the sprint and international athletes kind of all coming together. So the course details, I'm sure if you're on the call, you've kind of, everyone has heard about what this race is famous for, and that's the Garvin Heights Hill um, on the International Bike Course, which I, I drove it the other two weeks ago, and you know, even driving up it seems challenging, so I'm just so impressed with all the athletes. Um, so you can check out our course map on our website. Um, you can see the distances there. Hopefully, you know, you guys know what distance uh, you're competing in. but I'd recommend, you know, the Saturday when you get there, I'd highly recommend going and driving the bike course. It's always nice to see, um, go experience the bike course if you're not familiar with it. If you're not from Winona and know these roads, I'd go go drive it so that you're, you know, feeling again confident when you when you race it on race morning. So starting off the swim, the swim is a point to point. So um, we'll be starting in Lake Winona, kind of going out. You're going to come back in from transition. The bike course, the sprint course will be um, an out and back, and this is in bluff country. So the out and back for the sprint, you know, it's kind of an uphill on the way out, but then as a positive, you get that downhill on the way back. Um, the international course, you know, 
definitely, definitely drive the Garvin Heights Hill if you've never seen that hill before. You have the, you know, you'll be doing the out and back with the sprinters, um, but then you'll go and do the big, beautiful um, loop and the bluff where you go up the Garvin Heights Hill and then kind of you get, you get some nice little flat areas and then um, you head back down the hill, back around the lake. And then the run, the run is just a beautiful run um, out and back around the lake again. Um, with these, we'll have, we'll have aid station and aid station on the run along with aid stations in the transition area. So just, you know, be aware of that and we'll be posting what type of nutrition we'll have on course kind of closer to the race date. So if you're someone who likes to practice um, with the nutrition that's going to be on course, definitely keep an eye on, on that. So we'll be posting that shortly. Okay, Kelly. Well, thank you. That was a great explanation of what we're to expect with regard to the schedule and the course and everything else. And we can certainly go back and uh, give some Q&A about that towards the end of our presentation. So thank you for that. Uh, and, and if you can, please keep your phone off mute so uh, maybe you can chime in. On some of these race preparation points, which we're going to go over next. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, some really important things, you know, you're still a ways away from race day. Hopefully you've been training really effectively and putting in the time. You know, you got to put in the work. Triathlon is not an easy sport. I don't care what distance you're doing. It, it deserves your preparation and your focus. And uh, if you want to have a good experience, so make, make sure you are putting in the work and following a training plan. Um, and there's a lot of opportunities at Lifetime. We have a lot of great tri-team programs in the area and uh, online coaching and individual coaching and everything else, which we'll talk a little bit about later. But um, if you feel normal, anxious on race day um, or as race day gets closer, it's really normal to feel that way. And again, preparation is the key point. So learn the basics. Uh, you know, the fundamentals of training are pretty simple and they haven't really changed a whole lot in the past 30 years or so in the sport. I've been coaching since 1992. And I tell you what, there's been a lot of, of um, improvements and enhancements in the in the way we measure performance, but with regard to how we train and the methodologies, they are they haven't changed a whole lot. It's all about the fundamentals. It's about learning proper technique. It's about doing some hard days and doing some easy days and and recovering properly. And if you do that, you're going to really build your fitness and prepare. Be consistent with your training, and that means you're training almost every day of the week, at least in one sport, maybe some days of the week you're training in two sports. But I like to have something I call the 90% rule. And basically that states, if you hit 90% of your workouts and you miss 10%, you're doing a great job. That 10% that you miss, well, that's just life. You know, that's just everyday things getting in the way of your workouts. And it happens. Uh, the kids are sick or they have to be picked up from school or, you know, work obligations get in the way. There's so many things that get in the way of our training. So 10%, um, you can miss, no big deal. But if you can stick to your training program 90% of the time, you're just going to do fantastic. You want to practice your transitions. I mean, that's part of the race, right? Um, the race isn't just swim, bike, run. You also have your transition times in there. And the, the really good news is you don't have to have a high VO2 max or great fitness to have a great transition. So practice, practice, practice. If you practice them, you'll definitely go through that faster. Nutrition is huge, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more on another slide. Um, get your gear organized and race ready. Triathlon is a gear-intensive sport, especially with the bike. You need to make sure your cycling is dialed in, all of your equipment is dialed in, so it takes some uh, foresight to do so. Know your line, stay positive, say no to no. And basically, this is saying that you need to address the mental aspects of training and racing. Triathlon, again, is a hard sport. There will be many times during the race that you will say to yourself, oh, I want to slow down. I want to walk. Why am I here? But the truth is, you're there because you want to be, and you're going to push yourself through this and prove to yourself that you can finish strong. So you have to develop a sense of mental toughness. Prepare your race day game plan. Make sure that you do have a plan and a strategy in regards to nutrition, pacing, and everything else. And uh, we have a lot of course tours and clinic opportunities that you can do. So I, I, if, if I'm, I'm going to put a couple people on mute here so that we don't have a lot of background noise. Let's see if this works. Um, but yeah, so 
keep these things in mind and you will have a fantastic experience. Lance, are you on the call right now? I am, Troy. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So Lance Leo is our regional endurance training coordinator for the Twin Cities. And as I mentioned, also for Chicago and for the uh, Dallas area in particular. And, uh, and Lance is a top coach in the region, too. You may have heard of his program at St. Louis Park. Uh, and all the other coaches for Lifetime in the region report to Lance and are mentored by him. So, Lance, it's a pleasure having you on the call. Thank you, Troy. Appreciate it. And I know you just got back from the South Beach Tri experience, another Lifetime event. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that was a fun time, and you probably – be great for a lot of uh, Twin Cities athletes headed down there next year. What do you think? Yeah, it's a fantastic venue, Troy. It was a lot of fun, and uh, they know how to put on a good race down there. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah they do. They do. Yep. So, um, you know, with these points I just made, Lance, I'm going to go to the next slide here, and yep. we're going to talk a little bit about swim and overcoming fear. Um, I think yep. that's really important for most people because, you know, the swim is intimidating. I remember Absolutely. my first time doing an open water swim, wearing a wetsuit, I thought I was going to suffocate. I thought the wetsuit was so tight and restrictive, and I just yeah. remember panicking. I mean, I think everybody goes through that, don't you? Oh, absolutely. It's one of the, as you already noted, it's one of those disciplines of the three where once you get in that open water, uh, sometimes you can't see where your hand's going, right? So all of a sudden, there's a lot of elements that come into play there, um, as you mentioned. And as we have here in the slide, the whole panic factor role comes into play. Uh, and automatically you start to think you can't do it. Uh, and so as the slide says here, trying to avoid that panic uh, is, is one of those very important pieces. And when I, one of those things I do with my athletes is really try to stress um, the element of maintaining some kind of calm and deep breath um, at any stage within the event, because sometimes water gets in your mouth and you have to swallow it, or maybe you're choking on it. So, um, one thing I would say in that second point here is familiarizing yourself with race course and positions. Um, that will certainly help uh, give you some level of uh, awareness, um, which will also build a sense of confidence. Um, but going back to that first point about the breathing element, um, sometimes the best thing you can do is stop, uh, get vertical, uh, become aware of where you are, take some breaths, but do not try to go on your back and start doing backstroke. Uh, far too often, athletes will do that and they'll go and spend way too much extra time in the water. So uh, one thing I definitely say is, you know, stand up, kind of get your bearings, take some deep breaths, get composed. Um, the other third point there is stating position yourself at the back or outside of your start wave. I think that's a great one. I believe um, Kelly, you could chime in here if I'm wrong, but it is sort of a, a time trial start uh, versus a mass group start. Uh, and I think that plays uh, to uh, everyone's advantage in terms of, you know, finding your line. Uh, and when I say find your line in reference to the next buoy, uh, trying to find a line that maybe you out of uh, a lot of uh, traffic, uh, elbows and feet. So uh, position yourself as you're swimming uh, can really help you avoid maybe unnecessary contact. So um, those are things that can certainly help you uh, avoid panic. Uh, and then to the next point here, talking about don't, not allowing the swim to scare you, that's sometimes easier said than done. Uh, but some key points you always want to remember. Uh, we have some great lifeguards out there in the lake uh, that are more than willing to help you. Um, and by all means, you can actually hold on to those boats. Um, and you will not be disqualified. So always remember and that. that. And that's as long as they don't advance your position. So you can't hold on to a boat and they swim or right. they, they move you along. <laughs> That'd be nice, right? Having yeah. a motorboat move you along. <laughs> that, that could be but, um, quite the advantage. That, sure. Yeah. As yeah. Long as you hold and on. And also always remember. Yeah. No, that's exactly right, Troy. Um, one thing, too, uh, if it's really one of those scenarios where you just feel like, my gosh, I literally can't do it, you can just raise your hand and start waving it. Uh, and of course, those will come, you know, lifeguards and such will come to your, your aid. Um, the second point there, wearing a wetsuit helps uh, because it keeps you afloat. That's definitely valid. But as Troy was saying, if you don't practice um, in that wetsuit, and hopefully it is a true triathlon wetsuit, uh, you could be shocked to feel how compressed those lungs could feel. So, you know, it's really important um, to maybe rent one, try it out before making that purchase. So that's just a thought there as well. 
Um, mimicking the chaos of open water swimming in large pools. Uh, my tri team actually did that this morning uh, where we had about three athletes in one lane and one athlete had to then run or swim through that group of people. Um, so it's a great idea, guys. If, if you're on this call, you haven't actually taken part in a tri team workout to certainly consider one of those um, and get prepared for this open water swimming. Um, you'll notice here it says, if you start to panic, flip over onto your back. And I just said not to do that. Um, but uh, all joking aside there, guys, you know, standing up, um, getting your bearings, uh, that's just my thought. Uh, I just don't recommend backstroking because there is not a ceiling above you that allows you to know exactly where you're headed. So definitely take yeah, deep Lance, breaths. Let me chime keep in. Them. So sometimes you go. it's resorting to the breaststroke or, or yeah, like, oh, uh, yeah. you know, just doggy paddling for a little bit and getting your head up <laughs> out of the water and just relaxing, looking around, uh, letting yep. your breathing calm down. I think that's really a great strategy. Oh, I love it. Yeah, guys, no joke. I did my first three seasons all breaststroke. So I'm a huge fan of breaststroke, but that was back in the early 90s. But uh, the breaststroke is your friend, and it doesn't matter how efficient it is. Um, ideally, we should try to warm up in the water prior to the swim start, um, get a feel for the water, uh, get an awareness of the temperature, uh, what that entry point will be like, maybe work out some of those butterflies and get some control of your breathing. So, and that can take five, maybe 10 minutes, get out of the water and you're good. So moving to the bike element. Um, another key element here, of course, is comfort and practice. Um, and as Kelly did a phenomenal job already talking about the bike course, um, it's two different worlds, the sprint versus the international. Uh, the international course has a pretty epic hill. Um, if you can, I would certainly consider uh, going out there if you could and do a, a ride yourself on that course, uh, if that's convenient for you. Uh, it's only going to serve you well by knowing how to gear, modify gearing. Um, the biggest mistake I would say um, for that exact uh, course, especially when you're going up the big hill, uh, I might be jumping ahead here on some of these points, is making sure you know when to, to change those gears early. You know, when you start climbing that hill and then you change the gears, it might be just a few minutes too late or two se seconds few too late. Uh, and then you can start mashing gears and maybe taking the chain off the, off the bike itself. So um, just one little tidbit to consider. Right, um, and really quickly, Lance, if I, if I might chime yeah. in. So, you know, let, let's face it, the bike is over 50% of your time on the on the course is going to be spent on the right. bike and I, you know there's so many technical considerations when it comes to cycling and so many equipment issues um, I, I think uh, a lot of your preparation is to go into the bike because you have the right equipment the equipment's high quality and it works really well because the worst thing in the world would be to have a mechanical malfunction mm -hmm. out there that puts you out of the race and it happens sometimes so you know having that really good bike shop um, it, that can look at your bike and make sure it's dialed in before the race is uh, a key and critical point. Absolutely. Absolutely. I absolutely agree with that. And I was kind of uh, alluding to that sixth point here under smart pacing, higher cadence, higher cadence, lighter gear towards the end of the ride uh, really helps you spin those legs over a little bit closer to say 90 RPM. So you can come off that bike and run close to that cadence. Um, and as it says there, you know, the, the, the bike really will set you up for a good run. So it's all about pacing. Uh, and as I was alluding to, there are, are definitely some hills, even in the sprint course. Um, they aren't ma absolute mashers, but you definitely want to play those gears smart um, and try to avoid, you know, those really high or sorry, really low RPMs uh, that can really drain a lot of the, the pow and wow out of those legs. So yeah, I mean, smart. let's face it, that creates a lot of fatigue, right? So when you get exactly off the right. bike, you run, you're running uh, tree stumps if you push the big gears. Um, another exactly. point I just want to make as well is I love the high cadence piece towards the end. I think uh, the high cadence piece is important for most of them. Um, I think riders will find their, them, themselves more, more efficient with that kind of mm -hmm. technique, but also to stand up every once in a while and to stretch your hamstrings out and stretch your lower back, that usually exactly. translates to a better run as well. Yeah, no, I love that, Troy. And, I, I, you know, it's one of those things I know you've seen at the Ironman level, but even at the sprint or international, like, you don't have to be a slave to the aero position. Um, you know, by getting up out of that position there, maybe you open up those hip flexors a little bit, you just feel fresh. And on the fifth point there about smart pacing, the other thing I would suggest, I always tell my athletes is, you know, don't get pulled in to what other athletes are doing. 
Um, you got to stay composed, as it says here, find your rhythm, um, stay disciplined, uh, and I can almost guarantee you will come off that bike and run stronger and faster if you do that. Yeah. But uh, not getting pulled in with all the other guys or girls that are going a little bit faster in those first five miles. You'll probably see them in the last five or so miles of that bike and then overcome them on the run. So. Right. Um, well, and, and that's doesn't what, that really apply to the entire race, right? I mean, anytime exactly, yeah. you see an athlete go buzzing by you, you have two yeah. choices to make. You stay your own pace and within your comfort zone and finish right. the race strong, or you mm -hmm. try to go with them and burn all your matches and blow up. I mean, there's, exactly. you know, that's a no-brainer. So triathlon is a time trial, and that means that you're out there, even though you're with other people and you're racing against other people's times, you're really racing against yourself. So that's a great point to remember. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And going back to that fourth point real quick, being smart on the bike, coming out of that, out of, uh, out of T1. Um, one common mistake I know you've seen as well, Troy and Kelly is, you know, people are pushing way too of a, a hard gear. Um, we, we really want to make sure we're hitting, you know, that 85, 95, flush those legs, get yourself composed, find your rhythm, um, and then start modifying those gears according to terrain and how those legs are feeling in that moment. So, and then the last point there are cycling rules. It's very important, of course, that we're aware of those rules. Uh, really make sure guys, when you're riding out there on that course, you hold close to the right side, try not to get out there. Don't be a blocker. Uh, allow those cyclists that are faster than you to go around you on your left. Um, and that's, that's really important. I always suggest to keep your head somewhat on a swivel, be aware of who's around you. Um, and that'll help you keep yourself safe and all the other athletes around you safe. Yeah, good point. Lance, you want to mention anything about changing a few flats on race day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny, guys. It's all funny. It's, you know, it's, 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 you never want to get a flat, but it's, it will happen um, eventually. So I would highly suggest at least bring one tube, uh, those little blue little things that take the tire off. Uh, I would suggest practicing uh, prior to game day. Uh, how to take those off, and those at SLP will do that with me before Trinona and Buffalo. But yeah, yeah make sure you bring your you own stuff. Got a couple at South Beach. Well, yeah, that certainly happened, and that sort of takes the wind out of those sails. So, yeah. if you want to stay in the game and you want to finish, you better bring some stuff with you. So, yeah. Well, yep. let's move on to the run, and uh, you know, yep. the first point being efficiency and form. You know, you've been riding, swimming, your body's tired. Uh, it's hot out there. It's probably humid as well. So how important is efficiency and form on the run? Yeah, it's critical. Um, you know, feeling those feet underneath your body. Um, you know, you mentioned in the very beginning there, Troy, too, about, you know, the positive self-talk. You know, it's one of those elements where sometimes those are the, they come hand in hand. Uh, sometimes you have to talk yourself back into uh, the mode of running uh, when those legs feel heavy. Um, those lungs are, lungs are perhaps, you know, burning a little bit. Uh, the, the sun has now come up. Maybe the humidity is there. It's, uh, you know, elevated. Um, so it's really important, you know, you keep your shoulders relaxed, uh, you know, shake out those hands a little bit, take a few deep breaths, blow out the stress a little bit, uh, and then start doing some of those self-talk uh, things like light on my feet um, to kind of regain control. So you'll hear, see here um, uh, in that first point, you know, utilizing tempo, interval pacing, by all means, that'll give you that little extra edge. Um, when the going does get tough. And, and that'll certainly help you, even on race day, maybe to, to pick uh, some landmarks to say, hey, look, let's try to pick up pace from that tree to the next uh, just to sort of shake things up a little bit. So that's a, that's a really good point there in that first point. Um, from a, from a and, form and perspective. also, Lance, I mean, incorporating some level of interval training into your program uh, oh, yeah. in training. I mean, here we are, what, nine weeks out or so. This is an mm -hmm. opportune time to start doing one, maybe even two workouts a week where you're doing some pickups, right? And you're, you're running at your 5K, 10K pace, maybe a little bit faster. Um, you know, the, what, what do you suggest there? I love that. You just, you just set this up perfectly for me because Thursday is our first, or actually our second track workout of the year. Uh, but we're going to head out to the track um, this Thursday, hopefully weather permitting here in, in, in Minnesota. It's variable, but... Uh, we'll get out there, you know, do some 400s, get some 800s in underneath our feet, uh, feel 5K pacing with appropriate recovery. As you noted, we're nine weeks out. It's not an eventual, it's not an actual A race, but, you know, definitely doing some higher outputs. Uh, we'll definitely be executing that. And it's usually at that top end speed, Troy, I often say, you know, we, we want to practice perfect form. 
Um, so, you know, holding those hands relaxed, as it says here, sort of a 90 degree angle at the, uh, the elbow, you know, head is up, it's not falling forward. Um, keeping the leg turnover optimally at about 90 versus say a 70 or an 80, that's per leg. So about 180 total strides in a minute. Um, and then ideally with that, that third little point there, train with some variety, some hills, uh, will certainly give you that upper hand, even though the course at Trinona is relatively flat. Uh, it'll just make you a stronger runner. So um, those are just some things you want to be thinking about um, technically or biomechanically as you're running for sure there. Yeah. Uh, and then incorporating a, the brick, work, brick workouts into your program once or twice yep. a week where you're actually riding the bike and then hopping off and, you know, experiencing that strange sensation mm -hmm. of riding and then running. Don't you, don't you think that's important to do? Yeah, it's one of my favorite workouts and, you know, those race simulation training workouts where it's a brick where you're riding, say, maybe the last five, ten miles perhaps at goal pace uh, and then coming off and trying maybe in that first mile uh, to, to gather your thoughts, find those legs and hopefully find that, that gear that you're wanting to hold for the, the whole 5K to 10K. Sure. Yep. yep. Really important. Well, let's go into nutrition. Now, um, you know, the longer the race, the more important race day nutrition becomes. You know, the truth being that when you're doing a, an hour to an hour and a half event, um, it's still important, especially hydration. Um, but most people can get through a race of an hour to an hour and a half without perhaps supplementing calories, although it might be recommended. And every athlete's going to be a little bit different. But um, I think that the longer distances require more attention to nutrition. So, you know, preparation, let's go into the first point here. Um, pre-race what are your thoughts on that yeah having uh all bran and wheaties for your breakfast probably would not suit many athletes well so it's saying you know let's try to focus on something that's been tried and true in your training uh, ideally low in fiber um uh you know the the, the pasta dish or the the quote-unquote carbo loading approach um i don't think you have to overfeed yourself um, I think as you would normally eat, which is hopefully sensible quantities, um, 12 hours before will certainly, you know, tap off those glycogen stores and, uh, be assimilated into your body. So, uh, you know, it's really important that you, you kind of just stay close to what you know, in terms of what you're eating. I would say that's probably one of the key points there. Yeah, um, I, I totally agree. Too many athletes try to change things up 48 mm -hmm. hours, 72 hours before race day and get yep. really, you know, it, it, they try to do some interesting things to their diet. And that always backfires because their body's just not used to it. So I totally mm -hmm. agree. Keep things pretty st standard and steady. Yeah, and also we can't forget, Troy, as well, like we typically are maybe are a little bit on edge. So our gut will be even a little bit more sensitive. So uh, I've been known even to bring some of my own food that I know I like with me to the hotel, and especially for like a Trinona, it's easy to do that. So I haven't been known to do that as well, if you want to have even more control over that. So just a thought there as well. Great um, yeah, so Let's from that second point. Lance. Let's talk about hydration yeah. and the importance of that. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, the, the day before or so, I mean, I, I try not to have to go to the bathroom, uh, you know, five to six times in the, in the day. But what I would suggest is, you know, you're, 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 you're drinking, you know, that 24 ounces of, of water in that, that, that bottle. Uh, probably, you know, anywhere between three to five of those. Again, this is something that you have to test for yourself um, so that you don't overdo it and become hyponatremic. But, um, you know, drinking and figuring out what your body can take in and process is, is individualized. So I always stress to my athletes, you know, find that sweet spot. Um, and also you hit some uh, endurolytes or other kind of electrolytes to also make sure your electrolytes are on, 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 on on at the optimal level for yourself. Good Is that point. what you're looking you for, Troy? Do you recommend your athletes drink on an interval or when they're when they're thirsty? Yeah, you know it's funny. You know we were talking about that as well, um, and I, I believe in Arizona. And it, it, I I still think sometimes if 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 you're finding that thirst response, sip t most of the time you're actually maybe a little already behind. So uh, I, I try to, to have somewhat of a disciplined approach in terms of hydrating um, so that you don't, you don't become dehydrated, which will then obviously impact uh, your overall performance negatively. 
Right, and I tend to agree with that as well. I, I mean, you want to get ahead of the curve. And when you're out there training, racing hard on a hot day, and let's face it, when you race, you're pushing yourself a little bit harder mm-hmm. than you do in training. Most people do at least because there is that anxiety, that right. competition factor, um, and it's going to be hot. So you definitely mm-hmm. need to make yourself drink. So great right. point there as well. Yeah, and I, I think as we slide into the next point here uh, about the timing of that breakfast, um, you know, we want to get that food into our stomach. We want it to get through our body as much as we can. Um, you know, that two to three hours prior to your actual start time, I think that's the important piece. Uh, if your wave time is at nine, uh, for your specific age group, eating at four and then giving yourself five hours prior to that might actually be too much of a time. So, you know, I really think it's important to know when, you know, space it appropriately so that you can eat that breakfast at the right time prior to your actual swim start time. Um, and I always, as it already says, actually, in that fourth point, having an extra fuel uh, alongside, I always have about 12 ounces of water in my hand. Uh, I'll have some kind of hammer gel or cliff shot or something. And I might just spike things up just a hair, say 15 to 20 minutes prior to. Again, though, guys, you have to make sure you practice this in training. Uh, to see if that works for you. Maybe you don't need it, but uh, that's typically something I'll use. Um, also, in that third point, again, it, it's, it should be common sense to me, you know, using and, and having those bottles filled up uh, with the fuel that you have found to be working for your gut um, in training and have that on board. Now, as Troy was alluding to, for a sprint, uh, for about a total of an hour to maybe say an hour 30, you probably don't need a whole lot of external calories. You'll be fine with, without bringing any extra calories. Uh, but the hydration element, you could drop, you know, quite a bit of fluids internally there. So it's important to have some kind of maybe just, just water on board. So that's important to have, have in mind as well. Um, for the international distance, some athletes will be out there for maybe two plus hours. That's where I think calories are more important. Um, again, tried and true energy substrates that you've used in training. Um, maybe taping a few extra gels on, on the, the top tube of the bike, maybe slipping one uh, into your jersey. Uh, those are some definite tips that I have used. I've put them in the, the top end of my, my short uh, and just pulled it out as I'm biking. Uh, but one thing I would say, guys, too, is make sure when you're fueling, you're not doing it when you're working the hardest. So if you're going up a massive hill like Trinone on the Olympic course, I wouldn't suggest putting a lot of calories in that tummy when you're working the hardest. That won't go in your stomach. Uh, it'll probably, you'll probably spit it out, unfortunately. So that's one important piece to consider as well. Uh, and, and that's a great point, that, Lance. And, and another, yeah. uh, another uh, thought on that piece is, you know, calorie, calories in won't really help with regard to calories out, meaning if you burn, mm-hmm. say, 800 calories an hour through activity, you can't really replenish 800 calories an hour. Your body's just not Correct. capable of that. So most people need to target that 200 calories or so per hour. Um, mm-hmm. You know, keep that in mind. And then the other piece is every time you consume a calorie, make sure that you're consuming water along with it. And what that does mm-hmm. is it helps uh, uh, digestion. It helps absorption of those calories in your gut. Whereas if you take in a high concentration of sugar in your gut, and it can actually slow the digestion, and make you feel bloated, and that's mm-hmm. counterproductive, obviously. So, drink water with your with your goos, with your gels. Um, if you're having Gatorade, don't have your power or energy bar with your Gatorade. Drink water with your energy bar. Um, mm-hmm. So, just keep that in mind as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I know, and you probably suffered the same thing too, Troy. In the past, way back when we first started, we probably leaned more on too much. I know I did at least. I'd always try to stuff in more into that gut, um, and that never served me well. So that's really probably the takeaway for me on this slide is you have to practice what works for your stomach at the goal pace that you're trying to drive um, so that you're not wearing it on your sleeve and it actually is working and getting into your blood system. That's really important. So um, I think the second to last point there, again, we've already kind of alluded to this, you know, if it's over that 90 minute block of time, Uh, it's very important that you start to give your body something. Um, And by all means, kind of pace that intake. Uh, Don't take down that whole 24 ounces within 30 seconds, so you're certain that stomach will probably reject that. Um, The sipping method is typically what I would suggest. 
Uh, but to Troy's point, getting about 200 calories is, is pretty, pretty much a solid, solid uh, range of calories uh, for most athletes. And then that last point, you know, making sure that when you're drinking those fluids, you know, just don't do it just because you're anxious because it might be just too much. So as we approach the next slide, uh, looking at the equipment checklist, you know, it's, it's easy to forget things when we're, we're, we're rushing out of the house. Um, so this is a, a really co comprehensive slide. It goes through all the elements there for everything from the swim to the, to the run and also in the transition and post. So, yeah. Um, and, and you know what, there's a lot more of these online. If you Google, um, equipment checklist for triathlon transition area or something, you'll find other really comprehensive lists. These are, this is a list of most of the fundamentals. Um, one I really want to point out is the, the clothing, like the attire, um, I think it's really smart, and Lance, you might agree, to have a tri kit. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Um, it's something that you've tried, and 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 and, and you feel comfortable in it. Um, you know, it actually wicks the moisture away from you. Uh, you're not wearing a cotton tank uh, cut off like I did in my first try. Um, you know, the the, the high tech fibers these days will pull the water off of you literally and cool you off. So. Uh, whether it's a volet tri top or tri kit like uh, the tri team has, um, it's important to find what works, what doesn't chafe you. Uh, all the good stuff should not chafe you, so I highly recommend it. Yeah, and also we just—they're made for triathletes, so you swim, bike, and run in them. So there's no issue with transitions. You just go. So it can that's optimal. So fast. Yeah, exactly. So, good. Yeah, okay, avoiding. Well, we'll... Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, try to avoid putting apparel on after coming out of that water. That never goes well. Yeah, <laughs> never goes well. Yeah, just don't awful. do that, please. People struggling with that. <laughs> it's awful. It's awful. Yeah. 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 yeah, sure. yeah. So we're, let's go on to the next slide. Again, um, if you want more information about the equipment checklist, I would definitely get online. There's a bunch. But the key point, I think, is to um, prepare. You know, have your list and get ready to check off these items so you're not worried about forgetting something. I'll never forget a few years ago, I did Ironman Hawaii and we get to transition and I didn't bring my water bottles and I was, oh. my, my wife ran back to the hotel to get them and I'm thinking, how could I forget my water bottle? Oh. I've done this race oh, so no. many times and I forgot my oh. water bottle. Total rookie mistake, oh. but I didn't have my list. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. There you go. Amazing. Amazing. So, yeah. Uh, well, so let's talk about some of the um, upcoming training opportunities in the area. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So go Kelly, go Kelly. Oh yeah. So we have, um, a couple training opportunities coming up both down in Winona and here locally. Um, one thing that I always like to promote the city of Minneapolis is so supportive of triathlon. So, um, they actually set up, um, in Lake Nokomis an open water swim practice. So if you're around this area, um, or even if you're not, I would highly recommend going and practicing open water swimming in an actual lake. You know, Troy and Lance did a great job going over the swim and ways to, you know, help that anxiety. And practicing in a lake is one of the best things you can possibly do. So they will host that at Lake Nokomis. Um, we also have a Trinona bike and run preview with a starting line clinic on April 23rd. And that's actually downtown Winona um, hosted by Merchants Bank. So we'll be going over um, a lot of kind of the same topics today during the clinic portion, and then we'll take you out on a bike and run preview. Um, we also have a starting line clinic April 12th at the Maple Grove Lifetime Fitness. Um, so that's going to be hosted by myself along with Cheryl, um, one of our other lifetime tri coaches. And then, of course, you've got Lance's whole robust program um, that he can kind of talk about, too. Yeah, by all means, um, the tri team at SLP, uh, we certainly are always welcoming uh, new athletes to the team. Uh, we're, uh, we'll be doing a lot of simulation training for Trinona. Uh, and we meet essentially three days a week. Uh, so that's certainly one option athletes could take advantage of uh, if they're in the Twin Cities area. But a lot of athletes will also uh, that are on our team are not actually in the Twin Cities area and they actually kind of commute to it. So uh, that's one group training opportunity. Uh, one thing you'll notice there, too, is there's always one on one options as well. Uh, so if you're on this uh, webinar and, and perhaps you're considering maybe one on one would be better for you, uh, myself or any of the coaches in the Twin Cities area. 
uh, would be more than willing and happy to help you develop uh, and obviously any of the disciplines. So that's certainly one option. And the middle one there is, you know, a custom training plan. Maybe uh, you are unable to do the group training, uh, but would still like to to receive some kind of custom training plan that would meet uh, meet you where you are in your fitness, um, your training, uh, and also where life has you. Um, so that could be another option as well um, to consider. So those are sort of the, the things that – all the local coaches, all the profiles, mm-hmm. including yours, can be found online at lifetimeendurance.com. So if anybody's yep. interested in finding a coach and doing the research, you can either do that or you can contact Lance directly um, at Leo L- L- at lifetimefitness.com. And depending on where you're located, he can find a coach for you to work with. Yep. So, stuff. Okay, well, let's go to our last slide here. Um, and here we are towards the end, and we're going to open up for some Q&A. Um, but, you know, the goal here, of course, is to finish the race, finish it to the best of your ability, whatever that is, and then embrace the multi-sport lifestyle and make triathlon a regular part of your fitness routine. So does anybody have any questions? If you'd like, you can take yourself off mute, or you can type in a question to the chat area. In fact, I'm going to take everyone off mute right now, so that way it'll be easy. So everyone's off mute. If you signed on and you have the audio, feel free to ask a question. If not, you can just type one in. It's up to you. Okay, well, I tell you what, if you have any questions about anything, uh, please feel free to contact us offline, and uh, we will certainly get back to you as soon as possible. Um, Kelly, can you give everyone your email address as well if they have any questions from your your perspective? Absolutely, yep, I'm just typing it in. It's just kdonahue at lifetimefitness.com, and uh, um, again, I'm more than happy to answer any athlete questions, and I'll raise race week comes along and you're nervous about something feel free to shoot me an email um, ask me any type of logistic questions and again you know we have an awesome staff of volunteers down in Winona um, that are all recruited by Live Well Winona and they do such a great job so ask a volunteer ask the staff member um, if you have any questions when when you arrive at Lake Winona in June all right perfect and I see Lance put his email address in there as well. So if you have any training questions, Lance would be the perfect person to connect for that. Um, Okay, so Lance, Kelly, do you guys have any closing thoughts? I'm super excited for all of you that are uh, on the call tonight. Uh, I I certainly hope if if you have made the call here uh, that, you know, you'll say hi to me when you're out there at the race, if not prior to. So train smart and have fun with the process. And I can't wait to see you out there in June. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, totally mimic that. I'm so excited to be able to host you guys down in Winona this June. Um, We've also been recording this entire presentation, so we'll be posting this up on our Lifetime Try Facebook page, along with our training website for Trinona. Um, And again, if you haven't liked us on Facebook, go ahead and do that. We post a lot of our quick updates on there um, during race week as well. So um, definitely use all of our resources. Um, check them out leading up to race week. Make sure you kind of know all the ins and outs before before you head into the race. Great. Well, Kelly and Lance, thank you so much for helping on the call and giving all of your experience and advice. And to everybody on the call, thank you very much for signing on this evening. We really appreciate it, and we wish you good luck at your upcoming race. Have a nice evening. Thank you.